Hi, I'm Craig Button with TSN, and I'm on Only Touch Greatness podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. you. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. Lay down. Vancouver's Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Good. How you doing on a Sunday morning? I'm busy. <laughs> hey, we'll make this quick for you. So no, I mean, I mean, yeah, no, it doesn't have to be quick. I just, uh, just we're, we we got lots of things going on with the World Junior with respect to, uh, uh, you know, different protocols, awarenesses, like things we got to be aware of. So. That's all. Just trying to manage it all. Of course. So, so I'm Ryan, by the way. Thanks for joining us again. You've been here uh, before. So Ryan, Ryan who? I'm Sorry, right. I don't. Uh, Ryan. Right. Uh, you, who's Ryan? I'm oh, Ryan. you're Ryan. Yep. I'm joking. Yep. Okay. Okay. That, <laughs> so, Don, so Don Taylor did, Don, yeah, Don Taylor did the same thing when we had Don Taylor on. He was like, oh, who? Ryan who? <laughs> it doesn't work on Twitter. It doesn't work on Zoom either. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And of course, my co-host today is Big Mike, like always. Yeah, okay, thanks right again, Craig. Appreciate yeah, it. No, no problem. Um, yeah, so last time we had you on, we basically just talked about your career then. So we just want to jump into some World Junior Breakdown. Yeah, for sure. Let, let's go. Um, okay, so how about the COVID sweeping the NHL? Like, oh, is, that, is that where we're starting right now? <laughs> I sure. guess so, is it? Well, yeah, you just tell me where you want to go. Yeah, I mean, okay. It's not well, off limits. That's the first question I had for you is, uh, what do we think about the COVID sweep in the NHL? Well, I mean, uh, it's sweeping the world. So, I mean, uh, we, we can't be surprised about the fact that it's sweeping through the NHL. And, you know, uh, I, I've said this uh, a number of times in the, in the past few days. The NHL has d- demonstrated unequivocally that they are going to be fluid. They're going to be nimble. They're going to be agile. And they're always going to try to minimize the risk to the greatest extent possible. They did it in the return to play in the summer of 2020. They did it with the uh, uh, delayed start of the 2021 season, the, the, the divisions, how, how they put protocols in place. Now this year, now they've adjusted again with protocols in place, postponement of games. So, I mean, this is a reality of our world. And, and, and you know, there's no, no other way to deal with realities than to understand Okay, who are the experts in the field? They deal with their medical people and the advice they get, and then they act. And I think the NHL has been – I think the NHL has been exemplary in their, in their actions since the return – since the pause of March 2020 and all the way through here. And, you know, all we can do is, is uh, hope that, uh, that, uh, that nobody gets seriously sick, number one. Number two is that, you know, that this, uh, this wave uh, can be shorter uh, in length. But again, you have to it, it, think about it. Just think about it. on Sunday, December the twelfth, is the first time we heard about this spread of, of the new variant, and you know, and, and, and increased spread. That was that, that is that is not very long ago, and you know that's when the flames went in, and now we look at teams that have been shut down to post Christmas, postponed and everything. So the NHL has shown that they're going to be nimble and they're going to make the necessary decisions. And as a Canucks season ticket holder, it's hard on us because we uh, basically, for me anyways, I pay with my credit card and then you you get you sell your tickets, your games, 
and you put the money back on your credit card like you should. And then now the, they were going to reimburse the credit card. I have to go track down these people. I don't even know who they were that I sold tickets to to try to reimburse their money. Yeah, no, and, and, and Ryan, that's one of the difficulties that we're dealing with in the pandemic in, in a lot of different business transactions. You know, uh, you, you know, a lot of things where you're required to put a deposit down, season tickets come to mind, you know, the secondary market, right? And then how, how, how do they get their money back? How do you get your money back, right? Like, I mean, it, it, it's a two-way transaction because, you know, other people paid you, you got to pay them back, you yeah. got to get paid back, right? So, I mean, but 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 I think that with, you know, technology, and I, I think it's a reminder for all of us to be patient, to be patient yeah. with one another. And, you know, I, I'm a believer that uh, the vast majority of people have only the best in, 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 uh, intentions uh, in their dealings. So, you know, that's what I trust. Uh, I know it's not always the case, but I think it is in the vast majority of cases. So, you know, it's and, – and again – you know, we, we look forward to, to going out and, and whether it be Brian Adams canceled his concert in, in Vancouver when he heard about the, he said, okay, I got to cancel. So people have bought tickets and people are looking forward to going into venues again. So it's a postponement cancellation. I mean, I guess in semantics, but yeah. you know, we, we, we've seen a return, right? We've seen a p- return and, and now we got to just take a little step back. That's okay. You know, I was, I was supposed to be at the Toronto Maple Leafs Canuck game last night in the green guy seats, you know, where the green guys are dancing around. I was supposed to be in those seats last night. Aren't you one of the green guys? Just no. because, <laughs> just because we see your lovely face today, doesn't mean we don't know that you're one of the green guys. I'm the, I'm the Don Cherry guy. I dressed up as Don Cherry <laughs> and go to the games. <laughs> well, I, I got to say this to you, Ryan. I mean, I mean, it's exciting to go and watch Canucks games again, isn't it? Six and yeah. under, under BB. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's, it's definitely a better atmosphere inside the building. That's for sure. Mike, what do you think of? Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask him. Uh, what do you think of the taxi squad happening again with uh, the COVID numbers going up like this? Well, I think uh, well, well, number one, Mike, I'd say that uh, what you have to do is is understand what the spread is. You know, yes, uh, on on I believe it was Saturday, December the eighteenth. Uh, all the flames that it, no, there was no positive test return. So again, like think about just think about what happened in a, December twelfth to December eighteenth. I mean, they had 32 players and staff combined that had tested positive or on COVID protocols. And six days later, they had no positive tests. So what I would say, again, when I talk about the NHL and everybody monitoring, you know, the situation and being agile, I mean, Sunday, they're supposed to travel to Chicago. Whoops, can't do that. Postpone a game, postpone a game. Okay, now they're after Christmas. Well, if nobody's returning positive tests now six days later, and, and symptoms aren't there, well, that's a positive sign. So, you know, I think that we saw last year uh, a real necessity because keep in mind the American Hockey League wasn't really running, you know, junior leagues weren't really running. So it made really good sense, you know, with, without vaccines, right, without vaccines, without knowing what the treatments were or what, what the best treatments were to, to, to treat the illness, that the taxi squad made a lot of sense. Now that had – you know that's not part of it this year. Would it would it be reconsidered if if the situation requires it? Yeah, I think it would be. But keep in mind, keep in mind, and this is a big thing to keep in mind. Where are you going to put a strain? Because if you have now a taxi squad in the NHL, where are you taking those players from? You're taking yeah. them from your American Hockey League team. And now, what does that do to your American Hockey League team, right? And you know, there's not. A, and you think about travel. You think about you know everything that goes with it. It's not off the table. But it's not on the table right now either. But it's it's one of the things that they have if they if they need to open up the cupboard <laughs> and look at something, yeah. they, it's on the shelf, and that's a good thing. And what about Olympics? Do you think we're heading there, or are we going to take no. that three week break? Listen, I, I don't think it's so much about. Uh, I don't think it's solely about uh, you know wh- where the NHL is at with their COVID situation. I, I think it also you have to also factor in what the Chinese government is going to do and, and, and what their protocols are going to be with respect to, uh, you know, testing positive, you know, you know, what are the requirements going to be to come into the country ahead of competition? What are going to be the requirements once you're in there during competition? Right. And when you have a spread that's happening in the world with the, with, with COVID right now, you know, we, we see governments at, at, and rightfully so take, take greater precautions. Right. So, 
I think that those all have to be factored in. Now, I will say this. On uh, on Monday, December 13th, I thought there was about a 20% chance that the NHL players were going to the Olympics. On Tuesday, December 14th, I thought it was 10%. On Wednesday, December 15th, I thought it was less than 10%. Heading okay. in to the last week before Christmas, I think it's 0%. I, I just and I, I think you've heard those concerns. I think you've heard the concerns for, for, from the various. This isn't about wanting to go or, or, or not not wanting to participate in the Olympics or whatnot. This is about the situation, and that's just where I sit today. I mean, you know, I think we all like love the idea of best on best competition. We love the idea of the players going back to the Olympics. Uh, I just don't see it happening. I just don't see NHL play. I don't see. And you add in Ryan. Okay, so now you have the benefit of that three weeks. It doesn't mean you have to fill the three weeks because as Gary Batman, the commissioner, has talked about, you know, a lot of those buildings get filled. I mean, people are running buildings. they got to get their buildings filled with other things. But who knows what else gets canceled? Who knows where we're at at the beginning of February? Does it give you a little bit of flexibility with your schedule? But even that being said, even if it doesn't, you know what? Like maybe it just gives you a chance to, to, to get everything in order because we don't know what's going to happen in the next week and the week after that. So e even being able to say, boy, we're going to just take a deep breath here, allow everybody to try to get as backed up to, to again, because we don't know where the, where the spread will be. We, I tell you about the Calgary Flames, that's good news. But we don't know. I mean, I see the Columbus Blue Jackets on Sunday, December 19th, just had three players enter COVID. There's going to be more. And, yep. you know, hopefully the Christmas break, hopefully the, the measures are putting into place, you know, you know, limit the spread. Mike? Yeah, uh, I was just going to, yeah, we might as well start off with the World Juniors then. Uh, what were you going to say? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, who has the best World Junior roster? I know Canada, obviously, but uh, is, is there another team that can really compete? Oh, yeah, there is. There, there, listen, I, I can tell you this. Uh, every year in the tournament, there's – I mean, it's become a five-tier tournament. Uh, the Czechs are trying to find their way back into that upper group to make it six, but they haven't been able to do it. They haven't been able to break through. It's Canada, the USA, Russia, Finland, and Sweden. And, you know, if you look at, look, Ryan, if you look at the last nine seasons, not last nine years of the World Junior, three countries have won the World Junior, and they've each won it three times. And they've won it in three-year cycles. <laughs> you know, and that's Finland, Canada, and the USA. This is not a Canada tournament now. This is a, th 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 a big-time tournament and, uh, you know, you start to look at it. You know, Russia's had an excellent 2002 group, which is the 19-year-olds in this tournament. They're going to be a team that's going to be able to compete for the gold medal. USA is going to compete for the gold medal. Uh, you can never, ever rule out Finland. If you want to rule out Finland in any international tournament, yeah. uh, I, th I think you, you, you're in danger of looking really bad. And, you know, the Swedes this year, they're, they're going to have good goaltending. Their blue line's pretty good. You know, the... the how much for like how much skill? I shouldn't say skill. I mean, their their offensive depth is not great, especially up the middle of the ice. But th they'll play it tighter. They'll play, they'll they'll play more defensive. So, you know, Canada has an excellent roster. The, 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 this is not a. There is no runaway favorite here. Uh, I mean, my last four teams in the tournament, I think, will be Canada, Finland, Russia, and the USA. But you know what, like. Without the benefit right now, today, you know, one of the benefits I get is just to watch some of the pre tourney games. We're only going to have uh, a pre, uh, each country will only have one pre tourney game. So now, that's a games, small sample size. The games yesterday were canceled, right? They were pushed. So, well, so there was supposed to be uh, pre tourney games on the 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Those were all canceled. And now the plan is, is to have every team play a game on the 23rd or 24th okay. every team gets a chance for one game and they're only gonna there's not going to be any cross they're going to have to play within their pool you know a lot of times they're pre-tourney games if you look at canada's schedule they were they, they were going to play switzerland sweden and russia all from the other pool and that's how they usually mm -hmm. split it up uh you know they're going to have to play that uh, pre-tourney game within their pool and i don't think canada wants to play it against uh germany or austria so I would, I would anticipate that Germany and Austria are going to play one another, and you're going to see Canada play either the Czechs or Finland, and then Finland or Czechs might uh, uh, get an extra game somewhere to try to complete it, and you'll see the same thing in, uh, uh, in red gear. 
So, and uh, how much can you read into uh, Connor Bedard being named the thirteenth forward? Well, I mean, you can. He's not. He. Has, I can. I can tell you this, Mike. He hasn't been named nothing. He just, you can look, the, he's on the second power play unit. So let me just see, 13 forward on the second power play unit. I don't know. I, I, you know what? There's a lot that's going to unfold here. And what I say about Connor Bedard is, Connor Bedard has shown not only in making the team how good he is, but he's also shown in his, in his previous experiences, doesn't matter how high the expectations are, doesn't matter how high the bar is, he finds a way to get above it. And, uh, you know, Connor's a, Connor's a top player. And, you can look at it and it gets reported this, it gets reported that. I've seen this tournament for years and I can tell you what, how it starts is never how it finishes. That's for sure. And this is a, really the first major tournament for Bedard where we get to see, of course, we saw him at the U18s last year. Um, but you think after Keep in mind, Ryan, that was a ma- that's a major tournament. And, yep. and, and just about every player in that tournament was two years older than Connor. That's a best yep. on best tournament at U18. And he's two years younger than everybody. It was that performance there was significant. Yeah, it was. Go ahead. Of course, we've had him on the show. He's a good kid. We know his dad pretty well as well. Um, do you think after this, he becomes a household name, this World Junior Tournament? He already is a household name. What, I know, household, but... is, what household are you living in? He's <laughs> a household name across Canada. My the, mom doesn't the... know who he is. Well, I bet you better start talking to her about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can tell you this. I, I like I, I'm all around the country, and I can tell you what everybody asks me about Connor Bedard and Shane Wright. <laughs> That's good. <I laughs> everybody asks me about him, and you know they go, "How good is he?" A lot of people haven't seen him, but they all know the name. So tell your t- 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 you need t- you need to keep your mom informed. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get my mom a <laughs> World Juniors uh, ticket pack or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who do you think's better, Bedard or Shane Wright? They're different players. Yeah, you know who's better? Let me ask you this: Who's better, Patrice Bergeron or uh, uh, Patrice Bergeron or David Pasternak? Who's better? Bergeron to me, it's Canadian. Okay, well, so you're going players. with the Canadian? They're but they're two different players. I, I'm just who's so Shane Wright's a top notch player. Connor Bedard's a top notch player. All I know is is that uh, you know you watch Patrice. I, I would love to have Pasternak or Bergeron on my team. Either one of them. Either one of them. And so, you know, what are you looking for on your team? And what do you do? I like, you know, it's one of those questions that we always get asked, and I always get, who's better? Who's better? Unless your name's Connor McDavid, Mary Lemieux, Wayne Gretzky, Sidney Crosby, you know, you, you can never answer the question because it, it it's never it's never that clear cut. It's uh, unless you're talking about, like I said, Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky, Eric Lindros at the time, right? Like those were the guys. The rest of the players, I mean, uh, like they're all good. And, and Wright's a, a phenomenal player the way he plays the game. And Bedard's a phenomenal player the way he plays the game. Keep in mind, keep this in mind, and you guys are too young to you, – you know it, but you don't remember it. Steve Eisenman was getting 150 points a year, and he didn't make Team Canada. He was the oh, third-best yeah. center in the National Hockey League after Gretzky and Lemieux, and, and, and he couldn't bust through on Team Canada. Did it mean he wasn't good? No, he was great. But – you know, teams are built different ways. So, Connor Bedard is uh, is a different player than, than Shane Wright. They're both outstanding in their own right. Another two guys uh, I'm looking forward to watching, obviously, is Dvorsky and uh, Slavkovsky. And uh, I feel like they're going to have pretty good tourneys, too. I know their team might not be the greatest, but I feel like on that team, they'll definitely be uh, the standouts. Well, on Slovakia, I mean, they're going to have a very good team, Mike. Uh, you know, Slavkovsky played in the tournament last year. Nemec played in the tournament last year. They got some really – one of the things the Slovaks have run into in the past is, you know, they had a they had a top end of five, six, seven players, and then it really dropped off. So, you know, they, they, they were always stretching for offense. They, were, they knew how to stay in a game, good goaltending, you know, competitive. But they, they, couldn't get, they couldn't get that goal when they needed it. They got a lot more depth this year in the tournament. You, you talk about the players there. You know, Nemec returns, Bikars returns, Mazar is going to be there, Komak's going to be there, Damic is going to be there. They, they, they got some really good players, and they're competitive, and, and they're going to be they're going to be a hard out. They're going to be a hard out. And, and, and to me, you, you, you know, you talk about those guys, uh, they're going to have a big part of the team. They're going to have a big bite of, uh, of, of the Slovak team. And, uh I, I would say to anybody playing the Slovaks, like we saw what happened in 2015. They got to the medal round. They yeah. got to the medal round. 
I'm not saying they'll get to the medal round here. What I am saying is they're going to be a hard out. Yeah, don't sleep on them, right? No. Divorce Dvorsky is going to be a top five pick in 2023. So I think he, he he's a stud too. Yeah, he is. No question. Uh, so basically, who's your final four? I just told you. Come on, Ryan. You just said it. Okay. Come on. You just man. said it. Bob, you're, you're I'll give him a question behind. I'm one Mike, question behind. Okay. Mike, 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 I'll give him a break. I, I know what he was doing. He took a little break when me and you were talking, and he went to talk to his mother about Connor Bedard. <laughs> so he just he said, he said, listen, you you, you got to know how good this car. He was gathering up some video clips to, to make sure she has them and she can watch them and everything. Uh, Finland, Canada, Russia, the USA. Okay, who's your tournament uh, MVP? So you can uh, you can tune in on our World Junior Preview Show which uh, I think is probably going (laughs) to air now on December 25th instead of uh, Christmas Eve the 24th when when I do my bracketology to see how it all play out. Okay. Uh, Give me a preview of the 14th. You know, MVP always becomes tricky with respect. I think it could be Kent Johnson. That's, you know, I I think Kent Johnson uh, could do things for Canada that Trevor Zegers did last year for Team USA. I think that, you know, you, you, you look at a, you look at a, 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 like, I mean, I think, you know, could uh, 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 Mason McTavish move into that category? 18-year-old players usually don't get into that conversation, but he, he's a different type of player. Owen Power? Owen Power could certainly be in the conversation. Jake Sanderson could be in the conversation. You know, we're talking about some high, William Eklund from, from Sweden. We're talking about some high-end players. Topi Nimala, who was named the best defenseman in the tournament last year. And these are these are top-end players, you know, and you, you, you start to – you start and look, you, you talk about Bedard, but, you know, Matt Faye Mitchkoff, I mean, at that same U18 tournament that Bedard shined at, Mitchkoff was the leading point producer. So, yeah, he was. Uh, th- th- there's a lot of really good candidates here uh, at, at this tournament. And, you know, if, if the Swedes go somewhere, if the Swedes get somewhere, I think it'll be on the back of Jesper Wallstead. So, you know, there's a goaltender that I think, uh, you know, he, they're going to need, and he's a top-end goaltender, but they're, they're going to need him to, to just, you know, throw up some blanks uh, to, for them. Because I don't think they have the offense, but – those are those are some of the names that I have right off the bat here. That was the next right. question: is who you thought was the top goalie? I think it's I, you know I, I think it's Jesper Wallstead. Okay. I, I I do. I think you know he 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 he's he's been excellent in the SHL for a couple of years now. He he's got a he's got an ability in the game that reminds me so much of Henrik Lundqvist. And you know, I, like I love Askarov. I think Askarov still needs uh, you know some technical refinement. And but but I think that he you know he he's shown that you know when he's on top of his game he can he he's elite. But uh, I I say right today uh, yes for Wallstead. Right. Who would you say uh, the Canada starter is going to be? I know they kind of go back and forth, but who do you think starts uh, the final game? Well, you know what, Mike, I'm going to tell you this. I don't know. I don't know. And 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 you know what I I can tell you they don't know either. They don't know yeah. either. You know, uh, you, you you got three goaltenders there. I mean. Who thought, I mean, it was funny last year's tournament, not funny, but Devin Levi came into the tournament and he, so all of a sudden he starts the first game. Oh yeah. Okay. And then, well, will Devin Levi get the next start? Will Devin Levi get the next start? Devin Levi got all the starts. (laughs) Yeah. And trust me when I tell you, and Jason LaBarbera, who was the, who was the uh, goaltending coach last year, working with the goaltenders like the Olivier Michaud is this year and has big, big input into that, into those decisions. And, you know, and, and Devin just kept saying, like, this is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy. We haven't got anywhere near that point yet, and we really haven't. I, I, on day one, I think it'll be Dylan Garand starting against the Czech Republic. After that, I don't know. And what do you think of uh, – what do you think Brad Lambert is going to do in this tourney? Because I know he's kind of fallen down the rankings. Uh, obviously, he was supposed to be in that top ten category kind of for the upcoming draft. He might still be. He might still be in the top 10. You know, one of the things that happens is when we identify young players, you know, when they're 15 and we see the talent and Brad has obvious talent, there's no question about it. But the rest of the pool for the draft is relatively unknown. So, you know, so now you start to watch and you start to see, like, I saw Brad Lambert, okay? I had never seen Slepkowski. 
I had never seen Logan Cooley. I had I, I hadn't seen Seaman Nemich, right? Like I mean, these are all players, and so inevitably, it's a it's a, you, you know it's in it, there's going to be an inverse relationship. We talk about a player falling, but it, it's player when you don't have the you're not even close to identifying the full draft class, but you go that's a good player, and, and Brad is a good player, and Shane Wright is a good player, but all these other players that have moved into the into the conversation. You know, we, we, we didn't know about them. We, we, I, I hadn't seen them. Nobody had really seen them to any great extent. And so now, you know, Brad, I will say this about Brad. I think that, I think that he's better suited at playing at the higher levels. You know, and I think, you know, every play, not every player, but some players just get affected by the draft in ways that surprise us. And I think that Brad coming into this year, I think he's really found his footing in the last three weeks, you know, you know, with the with with this SM Liga team in Finland, and he was a good player for Finland last year at the World Junior Tournament, and I expect mm-hmm. him to be a good player here this year. I don't know where he falls in. You know, I think there's enough players. He can still be top ten, though, Mike. But could he be fifteen? Yeah, he could be fifteen. But mm-hmm. I think I, I think he's an NHL player, and I think he's going to be a a, a a real good NHL player. Anywhere in the first round, you should be happy to go, anyways. <laughs> I like your thinking. Yeah, uh, of course, there's fans now at the World Juniors, but uh, do you think there's going to be fans the whole tourney? Or are they going to go into a bubble, perhaps? I, you know, Ryan, that's a great question. And I again, like uh, in Alberta and Hockey Canada, working uh, very closely with the with Alberta Health Services and trying to make sure, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to emphasize this because it, it, it's their only goal. It's to minimize the risk to the greatest extent possible keep people healthy, make sure that you're not putting any type of uh, a burden on the healthcare system by opening up a greater spread of, 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 of COVID. And, you know, we just saw yesterday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, they announced that those pre-tourney games were canceled, yeah. right? And so that was number one because they just said, no, we can't take this risk and we're not going to. Now you, you, you continue to evaluate the data and the information, right? I mean, and so we'll see. Well, like really, we're, we're in a wait and see moment here. Much like you as a Vancouver Canucks season ticket holder, I mean, you're excited about going to the game on Saturday night to see your beloved Canucks play the Leafs. But that gets canceled. For the right reasons, it gets canceled, right? And you're disappointed. People are disappointed. And, 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 it's, and it's not about – you know, nobody's trying to disappoint anybody, but what you're trying to do is really understand what do we got to do to, to, to make sure that we're not adding that burden. And, and that's what Hockey Canada will do. That's what Alberta Health will do. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where this goes. So anything I say now is just pure speculation, but we'll, we'll see. Okay. If you were having a dream dinner party and you could sit down with three famous people that are alive, other than, of course, Bob McKenzie, uh, who would you choose? That are alive? That are alive. Three? Do they have to be famous? Oh, well, not really. But And they have to be alive? No. Oh, dead or alive. Yep. Dead or alive. Okay. Wow. Well, the, the, the first one would be Winston Churchill. Maybe not the first one. One of them would be Winston Churchill for sure, uh, just for his uh, his wit and his quick wit. He he would be one for sure. Uh, Jean Beliveau would be two, and uh, number three would be Punch Imlac. And I'll tell you why I would like to sit down with Punch Imlac. And it would be Punch Imlac slash King Clancy. My mother worked for the Toronto Maple Leafs. She was uh, uh, King uh, uh, Punch Imlac's secretary. She talks so glowingly about punch. I was a young kid who were around. I didn't, but I'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to hear what he had to say, and everything. I I, I had many a conversation as I got a little bit older uh, with Sam Pollock. I, I never had that opportunity with uh, Punch and Black, and uh, so those would be those would be the three today. But primary on my list would be my wife and my two daughters. So, yeah. and they're alive. Yeah. <laughs> um- Obviously, you've heard the Steve Eiserman comments the other day about testing. Do you what? What are your stance on those? Here's what my stance is: is that, and I think with Steve, you know, he he made his comment about evaluating it, and you know, some of the things that he said were 
uh, his, his own anecdotal experiences. And, you know, I, the NFL just put in new protocols yeah. that said they're not going to be tested. So this is not – what Steve expressed is not something that uh, is novel. And we've seen now it being put into practice. But but what I would say is my stance is is that uh, I'm not listening to Steve Eiserman on science. Okay, I'm listening to the science people on science, and I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the Facebook scientists. I'm talking about the scientists, the people that 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 that, that have done it and know it, and I, and I have friends that are doctors and in the healthcare said like those are the people I'm listening to, and so you know. If they and one of the things we have to realize, okay, we don't have to like, like Steve's position is something that you, you you can understand, you know, why he's coming from that. You can under, I understand why the NFL is. I, I look at it on a bigger on a bigger way. Like, what's the impact? What kind of spread, even though they're in asymptomatic, could it lead to? You know, one of the things that we've seen clearly with COVID, it's had two material effects uh, on, 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 on our society. Number one, let's go to the medical, to the healthcare system. People, we talk about, like, you know, because of the demand on ICUs and because of COVID, a lot of people are, are, are not getting medical care. And, and, and the, the things are being postponed. That's a problem. And the more people we have, going into the and into the and getting the fact. And this isn't about vaccinated or unvaccinated. I, I believe everybody should be vaccinated, period. Okay. And and people want to lash out at the unvaccinated. Okay. We can't I can't fix that today. But what you can do is understand, okay, Steve Eisenman's right in terms of like, okay, they're asymptomatic and you know we we keep hearing this and that's fine. But it could still lead to spread, which could still lead to other people, which puts a burden on the healthcare system. Number two the mental health, the mental health aspect of as we continue to have uh, restrictions and lockdowns, and and that's not just uh, society as a whole. It's also the frontline care workers, the nurses, the doctors that are going through massive burnout and getting to a point where you know we got a real shortage in this country right now of nurses and frontline care workers, and 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 if you're getting sick even with COVID. You better start be thinking about limiting, you know, how you limit your, your contact to, to, and because you might end up infecting somebody that gets in there and causes a problem. Again, when I'm not going to get into the yeah. conversation about vaccinated or unvaccinated, but, but that's a real problem. So w- with respect to Steve, you know, I, I understand what he says. I, I've heard it from a lot of different places, in the, in, in, in not just in the sporting world, but in other places. But again, I'm going to take my information from the from the health experts and the and the science experts that have been doing this for decades. Last question for you: uh, Who wins the Stanley Cup? Well, I'm still putting my money on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, I'm just I, I like I know like every year, Ryan. There's Three there's lots of teams that can compete for the cup, and and I know that, and we all know that, right? And I know there's contenders, and we can look at Toronto, mm-hmm. and we can look at Florida, and we can look at Vegas. You know, Jack. I we don't know where. Ja, 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 no, not your Canucks. Nice try. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Come on, know. Bruce. There it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know, you you start to look. I mean, those are the front runners right now, but there's going to be a trade deadline right you know we don't know what the impact of Eichel is going to be on the Vegas Gold Knights and with injuries and everything but right today you know and you know as we near Christmas uh, you know when I look at the I think that Vasilevsky is the best goaltender on the planet I think that they have an excellent blue line you know Kucherov's coming back Stamkos is having a fantastic season they're finding their way without that third line and last time I looked which happened to be this morning is that at the top of the Atlantic Division is oh yeah that's Tampa Bay again. Yeah, they're always good. <laughs> yeah, they are really good. But I think your team's in good. I think, hands. Yeah, I think there's lots of reason for optimism. Yeah, and we're planning the parade already in Vancouver. <laughs> what parade is that? <laughs> yeah, the Stanley Cup exactly. parade. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I didn't. I, I mean, listen. What I would tell you is, uh, I, I would hope for a Canada Day parade before uh, <laughs> the Stanley Cup parade, because that's going to happen sooner than the Stanley Cup parade. Yeah, not this year, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, all, all right, yeah, Mike. Got, yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll wrap it up here, uh, Craig. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time for us today and coming on and chatting with us. We really appreciate it. 
Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike and Ryan. Like, uh, as I told you before, Ryan, uh, you know, happy to be part of it. And if you ask, I'll try to do my very best to uh, jump on with you guys.